So how do we do the integral of secant of x? At first glance, it may seem like there's no substitution that we can do because there's only one term. But we can rewrite secant of x as 1 over cosine of x. And then if we multiply both the numerator and denominator by cosine of x, we end up with cosine of x over cosine squared of x, which is our new integrand. We can use the Pythagorean identity cosine squared of x equals 1 minus sine squared of x to rewrite the entire integrand as cosine of x over 1 minus sine squared of x. So the great thing about this is that the denominator is an expression in terms of sine of x, and we have a single cosine of x term in the numerator, which is the derivative of sine of x. This means we can do the substitution u equals sine of x. So if we let u equal sine of x, then du is equal to cosine x dx. So then we can rewrite the integral as the integral of 1 over 1 minus u squared du, since the cosine x dx is replaced by du, and 1 minus sine squared of x is just replaced by 1 minus u squared, since u equals sine of x. So we can factor the denominator, 1 minus u squared, into 1 plus u times 1 minus u. So we can rewrite this as the integral of 1 over 1 plus u times 1 minus u du. The next thing we should do is to use partial fractions to split this into a sum of two smaller fractions with a linear denominator. Since the denominator has two distinct linear factors, 1 plus u and 1 minus u, we should let 1 over 1 plus u times 1 minus u equal a over 1 plus u plus b over 1 minus u where a and b are constant terms. That's how you do the partial fractions when there are two distinct linear factors in the denominator. We have to rewrite the fraction as a sum of two fractions where the first fraction has the first linear factor in the denominator, and the second fraction has the second linear factor in the denominator. And both fractions have an unknown constant term as the numerator. We need to solve for the constants a and b, and we should first multiply the equation on both sides by 1 plus u times 1 minus u. So if we do that, this equation becomes 1 equals a times 1 minus u plus b times 1 plus u. Since the idea is that this equation should be true for all values of u, we can substitute any value of u into this equation when trying to find the unknown constants a and b. So if we let u equals 1, then this equation becomes a times 1 minus 1 plus b times 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. This first term will disappear since 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, so the entire term just equals 0. So this equation becomes 2b equals 1, since b times 1 plus 1 is just equal to 2b. And this just means that b is equal to 1 half. If we let u equal negative 1 and substitute that into the equation, this becomes a times 1 plus 1 plus b times 1 minus 1 equals 1. And this simplifies to 2a equals 1, which means a is equal to 1 half. So if we substitute these values of a and b back into the original equation, 1 over 1 plus u times 1 minus u equals a over 1 plus u plus b over 1 minus u, then this becomes 1 over 1 plus u times 1 minus u equals 1 half over 1 plus u plus 1 half over 1 minus u. And if we bring the 2 into the denominator, this just becomes 1 over 2 times 1 plus u plus 1 over 2 times 1 minus u. So this means we can replace the entire fraction 1 over 1 plus u times 1 minus u with this sum of two smaller fractions. So the integral of 1 over 1 plus u times 1 minus u du becomes the integral of 1 over 2 times 1 plus u plus 1 over 2 times 1 minus u du. And we can do this because these two expressions are equivalent to each other, which we just found. So we can apply linearity and rewrite this as 1 half times the integral of 1 over 1 plus u du plus 1 half times the integral of 1 over 1 minus u du. So if we do these integrals separately, then the expression becomes 1 half ln of the absolute value of 1 plus u minus 1 half times ln of the absolute value of 1 minus u plus some constant c. 
the second term is negative because when we do the integral of 1 over 1 minus u, the negative sign before the u means we have to multiply the result by a constant of negative 1. So if we substitute sine of x back in for the u, this expression becomes 1 half ln of the absolute value of 1 plus sine of x minus 1 half times ln of the absolute value of 1 minus sine of x and plus some constant c. We can factor out the 1 half from both terms in this expression and we write this as 1 half times ln of the absolute value of 1 plus sine x minus ln of the absolute value of 1 minus sine x and the plus c at the end stays the same. If we combine the logarithms, this becomes 1 half times ln of the absolute value of 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x plus c. This is using the property that ln of a minus ln of b is equal to ln of a over b, and the absolute value of a divided by the absolute value of b is equal to the absolute value of a over b. To simplify this expression further, we should start off by multiplying both the top and bottom parts of the fraction by 1 plus sine of x. Then this fraction becomes 1 plus sine of x all squared over 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. This results in the fraction becoming 1 plus sine x all squared over 1 minus sine squared of x. This simplifies to 1 plus sine of x all squared over cosine squared of x. If we use the Pythagorean identity, 1 minus sine squared of x equals cosine squared of x. All right, so we can rewrite this expression as 1 half times ln of the absolute value of 1 plus sine x over cosine of x all squared plus some constant c. We can rewrite the expression inside the absolute value as secant of x plus tangent of x all squared since 1 over cosine of x is equal to secant of x and sine of x over cosine of x is equal to tangent of x. So now we can bring the constant term of 1 half into the logarithm and rewrite the expression as ln of the square root of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x all squared plus some constant c. This is using the property ln of a to the n is equal to n times ln of a. So we can bring the square root outside of the absolute value and rewrite this as ln of the square root of secant x plus tangent of x all squared plus the constant c using the property that the absolute value of a to the n is equal to the absolute value of a to the power of n. So now we have the square root of a square of a positive number since the absolute value of any expression is always a positive value. So whenever we have this case, the square and the square root cancel out. So this just equals ln of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x plus some constant c, which is the integral of secant of x.